and welcome to Cherry's World Podcast. I am Cherry Johnson, along with my co-host, Mr. Courtney Blackman. And today we've got a woman in the house who I am a fan of. I've actually been watching her career for many years. I happen to feel that she is one of those underrated female rap artists. She spits bars, y'all. If you don't know who I'm talking about, today we will have Miss Betty Idol in the house. And you want to stay tuned because you don't want to miss this show. The only podcast coming through your beat stereo is Cherry's World, so let's go around like a merry go. Plug your phone in, make sure it got a full battery. Download it Wednesday, listen to it Saturday. She cover all topics, whatever you after. She got ball players, authors, doctors, actors, rappers, singers, entrepreneurs, divas, leaders, androids or Apple. Turn up your speakers. Trying to shoot my shot like the vaccine, whether it's Cherry or Maxine, whether the podcast or acting, she that queen. Pyt, you know what that mean? Saw you on TV and touch the screen, touch on you. I plead, Lil C's got a crush on you. It'll mean the world to get a blush from you. Teaspoon to me, leave you sleep like Robert Tussin do. Betty, I have been following you at least ten years now. Really? Yes, Aww. I think you are so you. underrated. Yeah. How long have you been doing music? Um, I've been doing music for like a really long time, actually, since I was like seven. So I started writing at seven and then like physically like really recording and like trying to get a deal at like when I was like probably 15, I was going in um, to like have meetings and stuff. And then I have a, a publishing deal with Universal and I was signed to Polo at one point, and then mm-hmm. I was signed to um, Rob Fisari. He like discovered Lady Gaga, so I've been, you know, I've been putting in the work for like a minute, but just never really got my break, you know. For a long time, I know for a minute, Courtney. I don't know if you know this, but it was like Betty and Nikki had just like hit the scene a little bit and it was like okay one is gonna blow who's gonna blow what's gonna happen I always say even in in entertainment and actors God gives everybody what's for them right so Mm -hmm. there was a time when Gabrielle Union and I used to always audition against each other and I would get the job and Gabby didn't but look at Gabby now Gabby gets the job and I don't so Nicki Minaj kind of you know has taken the back seat yeah it's Betty's time it's my time now. <laughs> it's my time now. That's right. So what plans do you have? I mean, I know that you're doing love and hip hop, but that's not how I know you. I know you from writing. Yeah. And and your music. Yeah. Um, I actually had writer's block last year for like the whole year um, because of what happened like with my sister. So but recently I started writing again. So I started getting back into it. And I, you know, listening to beats and me personally, I like to create from scratch. So I like to work with the producer and like, we kind of vibe and like, you know, he makes them start, you know, playing around with like the piano or the guitar or whatever. And then I'll start coming up with my melodies. But, um, yeah, I'm about to definitely, I have a song actually that I'm going to shoot a video to soon. So that's going to be fun. And, um, but no, now I'm on cartel crew. I'm not on love and hip hop anymore. I'm on cartel crew. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Hey, I'm going to ask you uh, about your sister. Can you explain? Um, she went to an Airbnb party yeah. and there was an idiot there who was, um, he brought a gun and then she was sitting in front of him and then he shot her. Her sister so, was murdered. Yeah, my sister was murdered. So I'm trying, we're going to court. We're having court right now for that and everything. So that's been a lot. I'm sorry. It has been a lot. Um, it has. It, it, since we're talking about things that you have gone through in your life and your struggle, can we bring up a little bit? Like you tell me if you want to talk about this or not, okay? Um, she's the original Colombian. I don't know if you know. Yeah. <laughs> but, she, but she got Colombian roots. Yes. And has grown up kind of um, gangster, per se. Yeah. (laughs) Can you tell tell us a little bit about that? Because, look, I'm a kid. I'm just going to put it out there. My mother was really worried about me because I watched way too many movies. And I always told her I was going to marry the mob. What? Yes. 
And I was like the good girl who always dated people that I probably shouldn't have dated <laughs> until I got a real touch of dating the mob. And then I ran. <laughs> he was like, no, I don't want to do it. Okay. It got hot. I was like, this is not for me. <laughs> right. What is it like being kind of born into that lifestyle? Um, I mean, I had a good childhood. Um, there was, it, it was just difficult because like, you know, we couldn't really stay in the same place with my dad all of the time. Cause we were always kind of like running from the feds, <laughs> but, yeah. um, I, overall I had a good childhood. I mean, there was some times where it was like really hard. Um, it was like for one, um, our house, like we weren't allowed to go to Colombia because, they would have kidnapped us and stuff like that and yeah. held us for ransom. Um, they held like my nanny for ransom. They held my aunts for ransom. Um, they murdered my uncle. My dad couldn't go to the funeral because they were planning on killing him there. Um, Look at Courtney's face. Courtney, I didn't explain the story. I told you I'm a fan. <laughs> so I've been following her forever. Her dad is like um, a boss, basically. Yeah. Hey, can you tell these stories? Are you you you, you okay? You, you sure we can be talking about all this? Because I, I, I oh, it already happened a long time ago. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm just saying, like you know, I'm saying things that I went through. You know, yeah. um, yeah. as far as like our house getting raided and stuff like that. But I mean, he's already did his time, so he's back home now. They deported him. Thank God. You know, and I'm asking because as a kid watching these movies, like in my mind, it was like this glamorous lifestyle, but you actually lived it. Yeah. I mean, it is glamorous, but then it's just, it's difficult too. You know, there's always two sides. So it's, you get the glitz and the glam, you know, but there's the danger too that comes with it. That is not cool. Yeah. No, because it's like, you know, yeah. We would always have to like pray that my dad would come home, you know? And so is that how you got hooked up with the cartel crew? Like the show? Is yeah. Um, so actually LaShawn, she's, um, she was like one of the head producers at Love and Hip Hop. So she knew my story from when I was on that show and she knows my mom, she knows like my family and stuff. So she actually called James. And James Knox, he's the executive producer of Cartel Crew. And she told him all about me. And then, like, I had my um, my interview with him. And he just lived for Betty. He loved Betty. <laughs> so then um, so then I got on season two. And then from season two, now we're on season three. And it's going great. Season two was a little a bit drama. Because me and Stephanie, we didn't like each other at that time. <laughs> One of the girls on the show. Is it real? Yeah, she wanted to come from my head. She must don't know about you, huh? Nope. But <laughs> she got a little, she got a little, you know, she got a little piece, a little snippet of my craziness. So that she was like, okay, let me back up off this girl. She's a little crazy. Oh. But but I'm I'm overall super nice and loving, you know. Um, it just it takes a lot to get me upset. It's like somebody keeps picking on me. Then it's just like, okay, you know, I want to, I'm going to explode a little bit, but overall I'm just super sweet. Now she just loves me. Hmm. Hey, what's it like? Um, what's it like trying to date you knowing that your father's a boss, like, a, you know, a real boss, like are guys intimidated by that. Like having to meet daddy one day or anything, or just knowing your background. Um, well, before yeah before they were especially like when i was growing up my dad like my first boyfriend right i was like you know you have to ask my dad for my hand like you have to ask my dad for permission to date me because like and he was like freaking out because my dad has this accent he sounds kind of like scarface <laughs> so the, he doesn't really speak good english so um he was watching the soccer game and the guy came in and I was like, daddy, this is my, this is the guy I was telling you about. I like him. I want you to meet him. And then you can tell me if I can go out with him. So then he's sitting there in my living room. My dad's just grilling him, like just 
staring at him, not even like not even blinking. I'm all the way upstairs. I'm just looking. I'm like, I'm with my cousin. And I'm like, oh my God, I hope he likes him. I hope he likes him. But then my dad was like, okay, he's good. He's good. You can date him. It's fine. But only in the when you guys hang out, only in the living room. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's dope. But now it's like, yeah, my, my dating life is, um, I wasn't dating for like a while. And then, um, and then I had like, um, a, a boyfriend, but that was when my dad, like, you know, my dad was locked up for like a minute. So, um, my new boyfriend has not met my dad yet. So <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, so, oh, yeah, on, <laughs> so wait a minute. So we're saying like, you're not single. No, I've, I, I've recently met somebody I like a lot. Ooh. Lucky Sorry. man. <laughs> Sorry, boys, the DM. Well, maybe has he helped you with the writer's block? Is that why you're all inspired now? I don't know. You know, I think he has inspired me a little bit. <laughs> Look at the swirl and the dimple. I love it. <laughs> making me blush i love it see this is the part that is is all about cherry's world there's a persona that people see on tv and you come up with your own assumptions of what somebody is due to creative editing we don't do that here yeah so we want to give your fans who you really are yes and this is this me <laughs> yeah that's the beautiful woman that i love yay smiley nice girl i'm always smiling can we talk about the people that you wrote for or no? Oh yeah. Um, well, I, I work a lot with two chains and I wrote, um, blue dolphins for him, the hook. And I recorded the, I re I wrote the hook and sung on it and, um, super fly, um, for two chains. And, um, there's another song. Um, oh, wow. It's okay. She's oh, it's called Burglar Bars. Burglar Bars. I wrote the part Monica singing. And uh, I wrote um, Thug Cry for Rick Ross and Lil Wayne. And then I did a song with Lloyd called um, a Bang. That was like, that was my first placement. That song was my first placement. I love that song. It made me, it changed my, it changed everything for me. So that was the moment that like, I guess I got put on, right? Yeah. And um, that's when Polo, like, he was like, okay, if you really want this, you know, come to LA. And at that time, um, you know, I was just trying to still figure things out or whatever. Um, and I literally went all the way to LA on a, my aunt was driving like 18 wheeler trucks, right? So I was like, yo, I'm going to go with you. You're going to LA. And she's like, yeah, I'm going to, I was like, I'm going to go with you. So we drove from Georgia <laughs> all the way to LA. And as, and then I, I told Paul, I was like, bro, whatever, whatever I need to do. Like, like, let me know. Like I'll be at the studio every day, every day. And I literally like slept on like in his living room. Like, and then he was like, you sleep, you ain't, you don't want this. You don't want this. I was like, I'm up, I'm up. Just give me a Red Bull. Mm. And um, and then he saw like how super determined I was or whatever. And that's when he gave me my publishing deal. And then he, he had signed me, but, um, I was this close, this close to getting my, my big deal. Um, but it just, it didn't, I don't know what happened. It didn't work out, but everything works out for a reason, right? That's right. And it's not over. And no, she, it's not. She's also being modest, Courtney, because she has ghostwritten for some men who you think can spit bars. <laughs> oh, yeah. Written by her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I write for some rappers, too. But it's time for credit to be credit, you know, pay due, where people need to know. Betty wrote that. <laughs> so how do they feel like getting some getting the uh, raps written by, you know, a woman? They don't feel any type of way. Shoes, if if it's fire, it's fire, right? That's dope. Wow. Yeah. That's dope. I don't know. I can put different hats on at times. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How'd you come up with the name Betty Idol? Um. So Betty Idol came from one of the. She's actually like one of my best friends, D Smith. So I was working with her when I was 
working with Polo. And at that time I was doing um, like 50 sounding music, like doo-wop. And so they were like, well, you can't be named Salome. Salome does not sound like an artist that does doo-wop. And so they were like, you need to come up with like a new name. So I was just sitting there and sitting there trying to figure out what's a 50s sounding name, like names from the 50s. And then I love Betty Boop. Hmm. So I was like, Betty. And then um, and then like it took me a week to come up with the idols because I was just for one. Everyone was like Betty Davis. I was like, no, I don't want to be Betty Davis. And then they were like, Betty, um, they said something else, Betty, Betty something. And uh, I, I just was like, no, 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 it's not hot. Then out of nowhere, um, I just came up with Betty Idol. I was like, I like Idol, Betty Idol. Betty Idol maybe sounds fire. And so I told them and they were like, we love it. So then I, I just became Betty Idol. And I then like- I love Billy Idol too. I love That's Billy where Idol. I thought it came from, Billy Idol. Yeah, no. Um, Betty from Betty Boop. And then I w- I'm obsessed with billy idol um his the song's called uh what is this called uh yeah she want more 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 wait what's the song? Oh. It's so that the rebel the rebels yell right and then there's another one called um i just love his lip the eyes the eyes. i love that <laughs> <laughs> So I actually dated this guy for a while and the whole attraction to him was the lip thing. He used to do the, the I can't do it. And when I see him, like now the first thing I do is go, I go do the lip. Do the lip. You do the lip? Yeah. And it, it I can't cool. even do the lip. I can't do a look. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. But he's over here looking at us shaking his head like what? He's like, girls. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you know, I want to apologize. Um, I, I misread um when I about your sister, man. Uh, so that that is like you want to give that link or like where people can donate to that. The link is um that's in my bio is for sign a petition. So um, so basically, right now what we're going through is the fact that they want to call it an accident, and it's nowhere an accident um you know you can't just point a gun to somebody's head and then and pull trigger and call it an accident so um that's what we're fighting right now and that they released him they literally gave him like um they released him on home arrest so he's on house arrest right now um and they did it after two weeks like so he was only in jail for two weeks and then they 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 released him so, and then we keep asking them to give him like a drug test. They refuse to give him a drug test. Um, it's like everything that we keep asking them to do, they just keep refusing, you know? Um, and then just recently there, his attorney was talking about seeing how they could give him boot camp, but obviously we're fighting it. We're fighting. We're just, then we had to let the other attorney go because the other attorney that we had, it just seemed like she was so on their side. It didn't seem like she was fighting for my sister. It, and and I, I guess she just wanted to just get it over with. But it's like, you know, this is my sister that I can't physically touch anymore. Like, I can't see her anymore. And so they keep just in Miami. I don't know why. I'm sure it's everywhere. But over there, it's just like they just don't take anything serious when it comes to guns. Florida. You know? That's why I'm gonna ask you. Was it in Florida? And that's that yeah, makes sense. Florida. That's that's what that makes sense. That like Florida, they they are just crazy out there. I have a question with you talking about gun. I I'm sorry, I didn't even really want to talk about this because that's some touchy shit. But when it comes to guns, I am a gun owner. And I don't think that everybody should be a gun owner. (laughs) I became a gun owner because I got stalkers. Um, Mm -hmm. How do you feel about even people being able to go in the store and buy guns after this? Um, The thing is, is like, okay, so what I want to do is I'm trying to, I have a thing that I'm, I'm trying to get a 
get it passed. I, so I want to, I've named it Gigi's law. <laughs> so with Gigi's law, um, I spoke to like, um, you know, like a legislator to help me get it passed. So really it's basically, it's not, I mean, of course I would love to remove all guns from the world, but I know it's impossible to do the, And then like, for instance, with you, you know, with you having stalkers, I know that it's, you know, some people feel like they need it to protect themselves in case of a situation, right? Um, but I don't think that it should be easy for people to get them. Like, I feel like they need to go through a lot of tests, mm -hmm. you know, mental testing to make sure they're not, you know, yeah. um, crazy or they, they feel, you know, or they have some, like, maybe even a lie detector test to see what's the reason that they want to do it. Because it's just, like, there's so many mass shootings and there's yeah. so many, like, like, kids. Even, okay, for instance, the guy who m killed my sister, he bought the gun on Snapchat, right? Yeah. From How a lady. possible? I don't Florida, know. Florida and Texas, they... Indiana, Florida, Texas, Indiana. That's how. Yeah. So you I'm can buy a gun on Snapchat. Like, I feel like, and then for, for me, I feel like the lady who sold him the gun should be held responsible as well. She should. You know? You know, this. I know, I'm sorry we're sticking with this, but there's precedent for this case. Uh, NBA player named Jason Williams in like two, early 2000, he, he made a mistake and killed his limo driver playing around with his guy. He's a grown man, retired NBA player at the time. Made a mistake and killed his limo driver. Tried to frame frame it as it was a, like he committed suicide in front of him and all that stuff. But like he got sentenced to five years and he had the best attorney. So there's okay. precedent. There's precedent for this case. Again, I've been a gun owner since I was like 18 years old, 21. I bought a couple more. You don't accidentally kill somebody i've never even brandished my i've been in the position where i could have brandished my gun with a man trying to literally break in my house we're face to face through the window i wasn't going to shoot through the window when i can set my alarm off and be like i'm calling 911 like you don't just accidentally shoot somebody exactly it's well, like people are not responsible yeah he was he was being uh reckless with the firearm and uh yeah. And so, I mean, there's, there's precedent, even if, even if, even if it was an accident, so to say, he still gotta, still gotta pay for that. You know, he still needs to go pay for, pay for what he did. Someone's not here because of his, whatever mistake, whatever you want to say, you, you still gotta pay I for that. Yeah. No, the, the guy that did that, if I feel like he just had a motive and he did it on purpose. Cause I wanted to ask, but I didn't want to ask. On um, on camera, if you were uncomfortable, if you felt like it was intentional. No, I definitely feel like it was intentional. I don't know why, but I feel like it was intentional. Because um, even for, okay, so he recorded himself going to the party. And the music that he was listening to was talking about close range, like killing somebody at close range. Then... When he gets there, he zooms into the barrel. And this is on his Snapchat. So he zooms into the barrel and he sees the hollow tip. He's, you see the bullet. Then the next post, um, he takes a picture of himself right after he kills my sister and says he's going away for a long time. Oh, um, yeah. That's so premeditated. You, do you think it was somebody that your sister knew or she just ended up being the innocent victim? So the guy was dating her friend like probably like a few months ago and she was talking to his friend. So he said um, he knew her. Yeah, like she met him like a week kind of like they would like see each other here and there or whatever. Um but they weren't friends, you know. But an acquaintance. It, yeah, like an acquaintance, but it was just like I don't and you did the thing is it's like my sister is the sweetest person ever like 
she's like literally the sweetest person like she would go inside of like she would just start randomly laughing like you'd be like why are you laughing she just wanted to laugh for no reason you know so it was just like i don't get it you know at this this point with him being out of jail are you in fear for your life no i'm not i'm not scared of my life i just you know i need him i need him to be held responsible for what he did and and I need the system to stop um, just acting like people, you know, that get shot by someone else is just, oh, it's just, oh, it's just reckless or it's just an accident. Like, no, people need to be taken. I don't care how old you are. Like, you take someone's life, you need to be held responsible for it. And their parents need to be held responsible for it. And the person that sells them the gun needs to be held responsible for it. He was a minor when he bought the damn gun. So it's like, Oh yeah. How do you sell a gun to him? So what Betty, what can I do? What can Trey's world do? What can everybody out there who's watching this interview do to help and to help your sister get some justice? Well, uh, they tried to, um, they tried to put a gag order on me (laughs) because I spoke about it on the show and they tried to put a gag order on me and they wanted to like investigate me um, because I spoke to one of the girls that were on there that I had come on the show to explain what happened. Um, she is my sister's friend, you know? So they told me now that I can't talk to her at all um, because I will be tampering with a witness. Right. And they tried to, I guess they were trying to give me time for that like charge me with yeah. fed, like with charging so should we take all this out of the show no because okay. they already they already the herald miami herald came to court and he told him he was like it's it's actually you're you know you can't do that because it's freedom of speech like it's it's you know it's in the constitution like and so the judge like she she completely was like okay it's fine i just can't speak on it like I can't talk about the discovering but they won't even give it to me so it's whatever you know um the only thing I'd speak about basically are is my feelings yeah and because it's how I feel you know and the stuff that I've already put out there into the world it's that's it but as far as like what everyone could do if, if I, um, I could send you the link so that people can sign the petition. And then okay. I'm definitely going to, um, I'm still working with this legislator in DC. So I could start Gigi's law. And then once I have everything the way it needs to go for her and for everyone in the world, so things won't happen like this ever again. Um, and people that are reckless and careless won't be you know, able to just purchase a gun whenever they feel like it because they think right. it's cool. Um, I'll definitely send you that so you guys can help me get yeah. you slot. Look, so. Kamala, Kamala, we need you to meet with Miss Betty Idol and y'all need to get Gigi's Law in place. Yes. Yes. I'm yes. anything I can do to help, please know okay. that I'm here. And I as a gun owner, I agree with you. Because yeah. I don't want to have to have a gun. <laughs> yeah. I just want people to be nice. <laughs> just be, just don't, you know, don't play with me. <laughs> yeah, just be nice. So if you had, look, since since Roger's Block is over, right? I'm just trying to get some new music because I really fuck with her. Um, if you could work with any producers out there that you haven't worked with yet, who do you want? Hmm. Pharrell. That's a good I'd one. love to work with Pharrell. And I'd love to work with Kanye too. Kanye is a musical genius. Him, Pharrell, um, dang. Um, yeah, those right now. Oh, I mean, in Timberland, but I, I was like, I started working with Timberland a little bit, but then it was like, I moved and then it's just, but if I could just lock in with Timberland, I know he would just give me. Everything. Everything. He's still one of the best of me. He's still. <laughs> so you need. He is. 
I mean, he broke so many art. Like, hello, Timberland. Yeah. He beats her fire. Right. Well, I, I believe in manifestation. Do you believe in manifestation? Yes. So you put it out in the universe, right? It's going to come. And one day you're going to text message me and say, guess who I'm in the studio with? I'm definitely going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to manifest it. It's already there. It's in the universe now. Do you ever spend time and just like visualize your life and take time to seriously manifest like daily? No, I just like say certain things or I'll think of it. And then eventually, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Eventually it'll like happen somehow. I'll be like, yo, I just spoke about this last week, you know, and then it'll come. But um, I wonder what that is like, because, you know, some people do it cautiously and it totally navigates their life. My whole life has been manifested and yeah. I know it comes from what I say, what I think, what I believe, but it doesn't work for everybody. So I wonder what it is that the, the blessing like hits on Courtney's one of those people. I don't even know if he realizes it, but he speaks everything that he wants into existence and then he gets it. <laughs> Why do you think certain people get meet their goals and other people don't um uh, probably because they don't believe they'll put like that doubt you know mm -hmm. it's like they'll say it but they don't really truly believe and so they put that doubt there and then that's what stops it that's what stops the blessing from coming because our minds and our tongues are very powerful mm -hmm. so it's like you know They'll say it and they'll be like, oh, but you know, my life is, my life is so hard. And so it's like, you go keep saying your life is so hard. So your life's going to be hard. You know, yeah. you're going to say, oh, but good things never happen to me. Then good things will never happen. You know? So it's like, you got to say, you got to speak those positive things to attract that energy, you know? So it sticks to you. And then sometimes, too, the people you're around, their energy starts trying to stick to you. I'd be like, look, go all the way over there. <laughs> Don't come by me, okay? Leave me alone. But has that is that something about people and their energy that has come to you with age? Because I know that that's something I still didn't really realize in my 30s. But finally, when I hit 40, I was like, oh, it was like an awakening. Right. Well, like, um. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I mean, you know what, too? It was, I saw the secret. I watched the secret, right? Smart. And then I read the book. And then um, I have a godmother. So, like, my godmother's always like, oh, you have to be careful with the people that you're around. Because, like, some of their energies can stick to you. So, and I really never understood that. But then I started realizing it because I would have, like, certain friends. Well, they used to be my friends. They're not my friends no more. But they were always so negative, you know? And then I was just wondering. I'm like, yo, like, I can't even tell them anything because they're always just going to be negative about it. And then I would tell them, like, like, okay, for instance, like, there was this guy that I liked, you know? And, like, I used to tell this girl all this everything. And then it was like, every time I spoke to her, it just it just never stayed. Like it was just always like, okay, it just ruined everything. Wishing, wishing you no good behind your back. Yeah. yeah. That's how, yeah. I used to I, look, same thing. You know what changed my life? I had a friend once I had a baby and he sat me down and he said, the closest five people to you are who you become. Yeah. So I started looking at the closest five people to me. I was like, oh, I don't want to be like that whole. She was my friend and she was fun. <laughs> she was fun. I would hang out with her. But she broke. I'm trying to be like her. And once right. I like, took his advice, I realized that my friends like disappeared. <laughs> but no, but they needed to go. They needed to go. They needed to go. And now the five closest people to me are beautiful humans. And he said, if you don't want to live their life, you don't want to be around them. Yeah. I wish he would have said that to me in my 20s. Oh, my God. Imagine. Yeah. Things would have been so different. <laughs> great. Fantastic. Yeah. But so still, things are great still. Oh, yeah. But what's the best life advice you've ever gotten? 
Um, the best life advice. I don't know. I always get a lot of good advice sometimes. Yep. <laughs> um, you I get a lot of good people. advice. Yeah. Um, I don't know. This is this is my thing though. It's just that I'm super giving, right? Mm-hmm. And I always put myself last. So I'm like, I always put everybody first and I put myself last. So now I, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to start learning how to put myself first. Even in, in, in or not even just put myself first. I'm going to start thinking about me too, you know? Put like yourself just, first. Unless you have a baby, then you go ahead and put your baby first. But you got to remember if mommy's not happy, you can't take care of the baby. I don't know if you have kids. No, I don't have any kids yet. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, you got to take care of yourself first. Yeah, because if I don't do it, then how am I going to do it for everybody else, right? Mm-hmm. So, that's it. Oh, and I'm just like, you know, like, just got to live life to the fullest capacity. Just go full throttle and live your life and be happy because life is short. You never really know. I got a question for you. Um, being such an attractive woman, how is it? Was it hard? Thank um, you. Yeah, thank you. I'm just honored being on, being on here with two beautiful like, women. She bad. That's how she got my attention the first time. You bad too. <laughs> she bad, bad. I was watching the video. I was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> I checked you out, Betty. Instagram lit. Thank you. Yeah, but being such an attractive woman, like, is it hard for in this male dominated? Um, industry did it is it hard for them to take you serious yeah yeah so how did you get like how did you garner especially be able to ghostwrite for for people like how did you garner their respect automatically like how, how did you do that um i know it was a mission for sure like I've, i always had to deal with stuff like guys hitting on me like since i was like 15 going into the labels and stuff and i'll be with my mom and my dad and they still would come on to me like like Damn, what's your dad too? <laughs> yeah, no, like they'll see me with my dad and then um and my mom, you know, and then um my mom knew a lot of people in the industry because she was a singer and a writer too. And so uh, like my mom will like, you know, get their contact and stuff like that, and then I'll have a meeting with them, and then they'll be like, Oh, I want her to come to the studio or whatever. So then I'll go and they'll hit on me. They'll be like, Oh yeah, when I saw you with your your mom and your dad, I knew I had to have you. I'm like, What the I'm like, you're weird. What are you 15? talking about? Yeah. yeah. And but I mean, I ended up learning like like put my foot down, you know, like I'll put my foot down. Um, and eventually they'll start looking at me like, okay, that's little sis, you know, cause I'm kind of goofy a little bit. <laughs> so it's not like, and then I'll try to, I'll go in there and then they'll really realize like, wait, she could really write, like she's really talented, you know? Yeah. So I'll, and then there's sometimes that I'll run across someone that's like, okay, well, I want you to write for me, but I also want to like hook up with you too. And then I'm just like, Ugh, it's so wow. frustrating. It's so frustrating. Yeah. Because and um, I tried to have like a manager, you know, um, like male managers and stuff like that. And, and sometimes it just doesn't work out all the time. So no, because you hope that you have somebody. I feel you a hundred percent. You bring a male in so that you can hide behind them. And then yes. they end up messing up the deal because they want to sleep with you too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's 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 so I'm telling you, Courtney is a unicorn. And Courtney's Courtney has a wife, but he's a unicorn. Like I told Courtney, and I have these conversations with him all the time. He's like, Why are guys such idiots? I'm like, I don't know. But 90% of the men who I try to make money with are more interested in sleeping with you than actually doing business. And I know you, I I know. (laughs) It's so sad. Cause it's like, let's get to this money. Let's make history. You know what I mean? Like, can we make history please? Speaking of the guys hitting on you, what is your relationship with social media? Like, (laughs) like, do you even read your DMs? Cause I hate mine most of the time. I mean, I'll, the ones that I actually speak to, yeah. <laughs> but, like, the other side of the DM, um, like, sometimes I'll go through it because there's some people that'll, like, write me, like, good messages. Like, you know, 
they'll like I got some good advice from some random people like you know people that um watch me and they love me or whatever some of them will give me good advice and then there's of course the weird ones that's like oh can I send you money for your feet pics and I'm just like no you get that too? I'm not giving you pictures of my feet I get that to the bottom of your pink soles I want to yeah. see your, your wrinkles yeah I, thank god it ain't just me Courtney, in fact, a lot of people don't know, but Courtney posts a lot of stuff for me on social media and Courtney has my password. Courtney hates my DMs and he gets pissed off and he wants to fight people. Oh my God. Yeah, I usually just post and log out. I don't really stay in there too long because yeah. uh-uh. people are weird. People are some, there's a lot of weird people in the world. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's a lot of them. Like a lot of them. You'd be like, damn. Wow, hey. how could you even think of that? What is wrong with you? <laughs> when you first when you got, first got your first big check, what did you buy? When you first got your I first bought clothes. Check? Clothes? Really? She did the girl thing. Oh, okay. I would think that I some... went on a shopping spree. I was like, yes, I'm gonna go shopping. And then I called myself trying to save it, just did not work out. <laughs> I would think a lot of clothes would just be given to you. Um yeah, but I don't really like all of them. Oh. Like right now, I'm trying to. Well, I'm not trying. I'm actually. I started a, a clothing line called Viva Gigi after my sister, oh. and um, so it's all like custom pieces. Like so, I draw them, like I sketch them, and then I have a seamstress that's like actually sewing everything, and and it's something fun for me because it's like. I'll go into like the fabric store and I start picking out stuff and I'm like, oh, this will look cute. And, and so this is like another fun adventure of mine. So when will people be able to purchase stuff or is it already for sale? No, no, not for sale yet. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to get the collection together. So I want to at least have like a good 10 mm -hmm. just to, for the collection. And then once I do that, then it will be up so everybody can purchase. Please keep us in touch. Like, let me know that kind of stuff, okay? Because we'll yeah, you and stuff too. And it's great because I want to do it for like all body, all body shapes. You know, because everybody's not. We're not all shaped the same. I don't you have know? No booty. I don't, I don't. I have boobs. I don't have no booty. Yes, you do. No, 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 I don't. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, there's a lot. There's a lot of girls that want a lot of big boobs. They're like, give me the boobs. Just give me the boobs. Hey. Hey, give me your top five artists you would like to work with. My top five? Um, well, I would love to work with Beyonce, um, Kanye, and um, who else? Madonna, Gaga. Okay. And, Major. Yeah. Yeah. How many is that? Four? That's four. One more. Gwen yeah. Stefani. Oh, my girl. Oh, I love her. I was going to say Rihanna, but that's a good one. Gwen Stefani. Okay. Oh, and I love Rihanna. Can I throw her in there, too? Can we make it six? Sure. <laughs> okay, yeah. I love Rihanna. Oh, my gosh. She looks so good. Her and ASAP. She's I deep. love them. So, question. Now that you're back to writing, right, will you also be doing a Spanish album? Yes. So actually started writing the songs in Spanish. So, and that's my first time ever writing in Spanish. So I have two songs already that I've written in Spanish. That, and it's great too. It's fun. Oh, I, oh I got a request. We, know, yes. we don't, we do not have this. Can you give us like a drop for Cherry's World podcast in Espanol? Oh, yeah. Thank you. We'll send it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, you know, anything for you, darling. Oh, thank you, baby. And when you go on this, so can we let, like tour South? Look, you hear me? Can we tour South America when you have? Oh, look, there? whenever you're red, I'm a traveler. So I mean, with your album, see, okay, let me tell you. Oh, what my, my album, yeah, yeah. I didn't explain, I guess, my excitement. So I'm half Puerto Rican, right? But I'm too black, and I'm not Spanish enough. Right. So every time we, and I'm sure you you feel the, the vibe, but like yeah, I go through that. Yeah. So we have, you know, now we have J Lo, who I love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, she doesn't look like me. Yeah. 
you look like me. Mm -hmm. So I'm like a little girl who can look at Beyonce, (laughs) but I can look at my friend and look at Betty. Like, I want to live that experience through you. That's why I'm saying, like, can we get you to go on a um, South America tour? Yes, yes, yes. That would be, uh, like, amazing. No, I get that. Because I, I always go through that. Like, literally. Really? I always go through that. They'll be like, so some Spanish people will be like, oh, you're Spanish? I didn't think you were Spanish. I just thought you were Black. And I'm just like, well, I'm both, like. You yeah. know, like I'm both. So what do you want me to say about that? And then then there's, you know, and then even like in Colombia, like some of them, like the like white Spanish girls or whatever, they'll be like, oh, well, I mean, but you're just black. Like, OK, so, yeah, your dad's Colombian, but you're just black. You know? And then I don't know. It's, it's always like that. I don't know why. Well, I don't know why it's like that. I need you. Hmm? My daughter needs you. She likes Cardi B and I like Cari and everything, but my daughter needs you. Yes. She needs that to, to be able to see her likeness. Yeah. yeah. I got a, I yeah. got a question I got to ask you. So, and, and since you've been on lip service, I, I, I feel comfortable asking this question. Okay. So you say you're from Colombia, right? We could talk about sex, right? So yeah. I, someone from that country, I believe, and her mom was actually a hooker there. And okay. she and, and she was explaining to me that prostitution is not l- looked up down upon out over there. As, yeah, as it is over here. I, I know. And, I, and I was just totally shocked by that. It was like it's a real business. And she was like, "Yeah, nobody even looks down upon it like that. It's just like real." I was, maybe you could speak on that because I did not know. Like it was like that. Yeah, there's houses over there, so like there's. Like, they'll live there. I guess it's like a brothel, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and then there's levels. Like, there's the higher paid ones, and then the middle ones, and then the, the, the lower ones, you know? Um, but they, they'll they look at the girls like they're, like, queens, you know? Like, some of the guys, they'll look at those girls like... But Courtney, how do you not know that? Because that's why men like to go to the Caribbean. They like to go to St. Martin. They like to go to Puerto Rico. They like to go to DR. DR, yeah, so. but but he was spe- <laughs> he specifically said Colombia, and I know that's what she said. And she was talking about because that like this person, I can't really. See, her mother was a hook. I'm like, wow, your mother was a hook, and she was like real proud of it. Like that's how we paid our bills and everything. Like it wasn't like a b- big thing, and I was just shocked by it. Yeah, I guess because, like, they'll meet, like, Americans or other guys from other countries. So they'll feel like, okay, you know, like, they're the it girls. Um, But, yeah, no, they they don't, like, over here, like, how they'll look down and they're like, oh, my God, what? You know, like, you do that? Girl, like, what's wrong with you? Over there, it's like, oh, really? So, like, so tell me, like, what happened? Like, you know? Like they find it fascinating. Mm. I guess I because you know they're getting to their money over there. Yeah, <laughs> they gotta do what they gotta do. But they say they look down upon it, and then they go ahead and give a stripper thirty thousand dollars who's on the pool. Yeah, it's glorified everywhere. Yeah, it it is basically even, even in the Bible. It, it's everywhere. Even <laughs> in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> You, Betty, we don't want to keep you forever. What else do you want your fans to know about you? Um, that I love everybody, <laughs> and um, to you know, um, to know that my music is coming soon, and tune in every Monday to Cartel Crew. <laughs> um, make sure you guys tune in at nine. Um, and uh, yeah, um, help me fight you know this fight that i'm doing for Gigi's law and um i'll stay tuned for viva Gigi and for the album the spanish one and the english one <laughs> yay i'm so excited about the spanish one thank you hey you got any rick ross or lil wayne stories you can tell us you know what um i recently like what was it not last was it no, it was two years ago. I finally met Ross. We have a whole song together, and I never met him face to face. 
he thought I was a sample when he got the hook. Yes. And when he got the song, he thought it was a sample. And everyone thought I was a sample. And I'm like, no, it's me. I'm a light person. Wow. Like, this isn't from, like, back in the day. It's really me. And um, and recently, Wayne reached out. like, And I told him, I was like, yo, that's me on that song. Like, with you. Yeah. <laughs> Let's make some more. That's so crazy. I'm actually going to go to LA and get in the studio. Try to make some magic. That's good. Congrats. That's dope. Beautiful. I'm excited and I'm waiting for it when it comes. I'm excited too, guys. Have fun. I'm so proud of you. Thank and you. I, I look Thank forward you. To the Thank you so much for giving us your time. Okay. Thank you, Thank you for having me. Thank I'll, you. I'll, 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 um, I'll see you guys. Right. Very interesting. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye. Hey, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. It is the official Cherry Johnson. That way you never miss one of our Chase World podcasts.